All right, this is a part four, or maybe the final video here on the on the two B, uh, where we're going to do run through the alignment procedure. The procedure is kind of outlined in the user manual here, so we'll kind of go through each section, and uh, and follow the instructions in each of those sections. A couple of notes here. Uh, sometimes there's an option of how to do a particular alignment, whether you want to use like a, a frequency meter, receiver, or a signal generator, and I'm only going to use one of the processes uh, outlined in the manual here. When we're making connections inside the rig, you want to take extreme caution because there are uh, you know, large voltages associated with uh, vacuum tube equipment, so you want to be really careful with that. So make extra careful when you're connecting up like a signal generator that you're not connecting inadvertently to a high voltage point. And I use a, a nice insulated tool uh, when making a lot of the adjustments on the coils, this one's got a little bit of a like a metal blade just kind of shoved in here, and that allows you to kind of get that centered over the stud and make the adjustments without any metal contact in, and just makes it a little bit safer to do. So you just want to be you know, take real care uh, when you're uh, you're working inside these two brigs. So let's run through uh, each of the alignments and uh, see how well we end up. Okay, the alignments we're going to run through here. First are the 50kc local oscillator, final LO, and that's going to be adjusting uh, T7 here to adjust this uh, 50kc oscillator uh, for the product detector. Next we're going to adjust the 405kc LO, which is adjusting T4 uh, here in the third mixer uh, tube. So that's going to adjust the oscillator that's feeding that tube. Uh, following that, we're going to uh, peak the 455 kilohertz IF can, which is right here. It's a pair of slugs that will peak for that. Next is the VFO adjustment. The VFO adjustment, we're going to peak, uh, we're going to adjust uh, T3, which is right down here. So that's going to, we're going to adjust that. And then uh, for the variable IF adjustment, that's, uh, that's adjusting uh, this coil here for the variable IF. Okay, the crystal oscillators are adjusted uh, with a couple of coils uh, down here. That's the next thing. And then uh, we have the pre-selectors. Uh, the pre-selector uh, adjustments are all up uh, right in here. So uh, L1, L2, L3, etc. These will all be adjusted uh, to set up the pre-selector. The bandpass tuner adjustment is really just an adjustment of the position of the passband knob on the front panel. No adjustments down here at the schematic level. So uh, let's get started. Okay, to align the 50 kilohertz oscillator, uh, local oscillator for the final IF, uh, it says we need to couple in a 50 kC signal into pin 1 of V5 and do that through a capacitor. So I've got the signal generator set up back here and I've got it loaded into 50 ohms through a DC blocking cap and then that is coupled into uh, pin 5 of V7. And once that's done, then we essentially want to turn on that signal and adjust the slug of T7, transformer 7 here, uh, for zero beat in the speaker. When we turn on the uh, signal generator, we can uh, hear the beat note. It's not quite zero beat. So we'll uh, stick the tool on the slug here and start adjusting for zero beat. I like to rotate down through it and come up the other side and then try to split the difference. Okay, so the alignment of the 50kc local oscillator is done. Okay, the 405kc oscillator uh, is adjusted uh, either using a frequency meter, frequency counter, or receiver or by using a signal generator, which is what we're going to do. Feed that into pin 7 of V4 with a 455 kilohertz signal and uh, make sure the product detector is on. Adjust the passband tuning knob to the middle of the range and, and adjust the slug of T4 for zero beat. And we'll also move that signal source to pin 7 of V3 and if we don't see a zero beat there, we'll retune it slightly and just kind of get a balance between the two. Okay, I've got the signal generator coupled on here. Let's turn the signal generator on. Oh, and we're not quite, uh, certainly not at zero beat here. So let's uh, adjust uh, the slug here at T4 to zero beat this signal. So right, right about there, let's see. Back up. 
or zero beat right there. Okay, we've moved now the signal to pin seven of V3. And let's see if we're zero beat here. Let's turn the signal generator on. And it sounds like we're zero beat there as well. So the 405 uh, KC local oscillator is now aligned. All right, to uh, peak the 455 kilohertz uh, IF can, uh, we simply feed any signal source into the antenna, zero beat it with the receiver, and then tune the top and bottom slugs of T2 for a maximum S meter reading. That might be tough to see the entire process here because we've got to look at the front panel and both ends of the, the rig, but we we'll get the idea. Turn on a, uh, a signal source here at uh, 3.8 megahertz. I got the product detector and BFO on so I can zero beat this signal. Alright, so it looks like that's right there. And we'll watch the S meter reading as we tune or peak up uh, T2, which is uh, this guy right here. Let's start with the, the top. It's going down in that direction. And going down. So it was pretty close to peak right where it was. Now let's check the bottom slug. It's going down. It's going down. Okay, so we peaked that up. So the 455 kilohertz IF is aligned. All right, so for the VFO alignment, uh, we just want to uh, connect uh, the same signal generator up to the antenna terminal, uh, and then we'll first tune it to 3600 uh, uh, kilohertz or 3.6 megahertz. Uh, we'll optimize the uh, pre-selector and um, and then we'll zero beat that signal and note how much uh, dial error we have because uh, the dial here we can just slide back and forth then we'll move over to, to 4 megahertz and dial in there and zero beat and see if the error in the dial can be compensated by simply adjusting the, uh, the slide back and forth and if so then there's nothing we need to adjust if the error is too great then we're going to need to adjust T3 Okay, I've got the signal generator dialed to 3.6 megahertz. Let's optimize the uh, pre-selector for noise here. All right, turn our signal generator on, and let's zero beat that signal. That's right about there. If I look straight on here, let's uh, adjust the slide back and forth here to be right on the 3.6 megahertz hash mark. And now we'll adjust up to 4 megahertz. Alright, long way to go there. Yeah, let's dial it right into about 4. And let's adjust the pre-selector. Maximum sensitivity is there, and we'll attune the signal generator to 4 megahertz. There we go. Boy, we're really close. So let's uh, zero beat that signal. Right about there. Well, as we can see here, this is a, you know, about a needle's width off of the uh, 4 megahertz position. I don't think we need to make any adjustments to the VFO. All right, now to adjust the uh, variable IF transformer, we'll go to 80 meters, uh, go to 3.8 megahertz on the signal generator, and then adjust T1 for a maximum S meter reading. Okay, so I'll finish dialing in here to 3.8 megahertz. I've got the signal generator already there. And while it's, while it's, I got a beat note here, let me adjust the pre-selector. Get our maximum signal reading out of that. Looks like right about there. Let's zero beat it. And then we'll peak T1. 
Now I turn the unit up on its side to get the T1 and you'll have to kind of trust me <laughs> that I'm uh, peaking the S meter as I rotate the slug here on T1. And it looks like we're peaked right about let's see, it's coming down right about there. And next up is the crystal oscillator alignment. Um, since I don't have any crystals in the A through E positions, we'll just ignore that. And it says on uh, 40 there's nothing to adjust, but we can check to be sure that it's working. We kind of already know it is, but we'll go through this process anyway. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, set the voltmeter on the, there's a test point on the top of the chassis. We've got it connected up there. This says to use a VTVM, but the VTVM they specify has got a 10 or 11 mega ohm input impedance, which is the same as my uh, Fluke 87, so we're just going to use that. So we'll set the receiver uh, band switch to uh, 80 meters, adjust the voltmeter so that it reads zero when it's on its lowest range in the DC operating position. On the Fluke, it's very easy. We'll just hit the relative position, and then we'll switch to 40 and be sure that voltage goes negative. Okay, I've got the receiver set to, uh, to 80 meters, and uh, we're connected up to the test point. We're seeing about 357 millivolts or so, and if I hit the relative button here, That'll zero that out, just like zeroing the old VTVM. And we switch to 40 meters, and the voltage goes negative to about 856 millivolts. So that tells us that the uh, 40 meter VFO is, uh, or 40 meter oscillator, is working. Now the 2015 and the three 10 meter subbands uh, all use overtone crystals, and we do have to resonate uh, the oscillator there. Uh, so there's actually one. Uh, a coil that we adjust for 20 and then the other coil that we have for L9 is used for both for 15 meters as well as the 10 meter bands so there's maybe a little bit of a compromise to ensure that it, we're oscillating on both of those bands so uh, we'll uh, kind of follow the instructions here we'll leave the VTM connected and adjust it as we just did and then uh, you know, peak these coils on these bands to get uh, the lowest reading on the, uh, the VTVM Okay, starting off on the 80 meter position, we'll uh, zero out the meter. Now we'll go to 20 meters, and uh, so we'll see a reading of uh, minus 600 millivolts. And uh, we can tweak the 20 meter coil here to get the largest negative reading, which is about where it was. So uh, we're we're pretty good, right about, right about there. Okay, so let's go to the 15 meter position here. And we've got uh, minus 558. Uh, let's see if we can make that a little bit more negative. And uh, as we peak this up, better resonate that plate. Looks like we're good there. Let's go to the first 10 meter position. We've got a negative voltage there, so we're okay. We're oscillating. The next 10 meter subband, we're good there. The highest 10 meter subband, we're just uh, 6 or 7 millivolts negative. So let's see if we can make that a little bit more negative. And again, we're just kind of striking a compromise here between, looks like I can get to oh, about 70 millivolts, and then it's going back down. So let's go back up. So we're trying to strike a compromise here between operation on the 10 meter bands and uh, the other bands here. So by cycling through, I've got a good negative voltage on all the 15 and all three 10 meter subbands. So that takes care of the crystal oscillator alignment. And next up is the pre-selector alignment. And there is a note here that kind of cautions you that unless it's uh, absolutely necessary, you probably don't want to touch it. Uh, we found in the experiments up on the air that the uh, highest 10 meter operating position, the highest subband, uh, isn't getting pre-selected right. So it might need a little bit of a tweak. When, uh, when I go through this, I'm not going to touch things very much because uh, if I have to sacrifice uh, operating on the uh, third subband of 10 meters, I'm not too worried about that since I don't operate up there very often. You know, the component values may have drifted and changed and rather than go through all of that, I may just uh, be very satisfied with uh, the lower two thirds of 10 meters and, uh, and the other bands here. So, uh, so let's kind of go through the process here. Looks like it's pretty easy. We start with setting the band to 40 meters, uh, feed an antenna at uh, a signal generator at uh, 7.2 megahertz, and then peak that signal. And, uh, and then just make sure that the pointer is sitting in the right spot. And then um, 
if that's correct, then uh, we can carefully peak a couple of uh, inductors here to maximize the S meter reading. Go to the 80 meter position, 3.8 uh, megahertz, and zero beat that signal. And then while rocking the preselector, uh, you know, at peak C5 for the maximum S meter reading. That will kind of take care of those bands. Then we go to the second 10 meter subband, go to 28.8 megahertz, uh, tune that in, get the preselector uh, kind of in the middle of the 10 meter area, and then peak that with L1 and L3. Uh, by doing that, everything else should be properly adjusted because we're just it's just adding or subtracting coils away from the front end. If uh, it isn't, then it means that a component value may have drifted and it could be something that we deal with at a later time. So uh, let's go through this. Uh, and without making any real gross adjustments, we'll see uh, how well that pre-selector is set up. All right, so we start off on 40 meters, uh, right in the middle of the dial, about 7.2 megahertz or so. Let's make sure the pre-selector uh, gives us the most noise in the middle of the uh, 40 meter position. And it does, so that's good. That tells us that the pointer is adjusted right. If it wasn't, we'd go all the way to the end of the dial here, just move the pointer back and forth till it uh, kind of lines up with the 10, and then bring it back in here. So, so we know that the uh, at least the pointer is lined up right, and 40 meters is uh, is peaked right there. Okay, so we'll turn on the signal generator, and uh, let's zero beat the signal here at 7.2 megahertz. So that's right about there. And it looks like we're sitting at about S9 or so. So what we want to do now is uh, uh, carefully peak L2 and L4, which are right here and right here, to get a maximum S meter reading. Again, I'm not going to adjust these very much because I don't want to uh, kind of throw things off a little bit. Okay, very little uh, sensitivity on that adjustment here and uh, let's try this one here it's starting to drop on that side and that's peaking up and then dropping again so it's kind of split the difference right about there so I think uh, we're good enough I just made a minor tweak to that but uh, we did peak that up just a little bit Okay, next we switch down to the uh, 75 or 80 meter band. Let's peak the pre-selector here. Okay, that's right about there. And put our signal generator on 3.8 megahertz. And we'll zero beat that signal in. Again, the pre-selector got that kind of peaked in here, right there. And then we can adjust for a maximum reading by adjusting C5, which is this capacitor down here. Okay, and that's peaked up. Okay, next we adjust to the middle 10 meter subband. And we preset the pre-selector to the middle of the 10 meter uh, indicator on the dial over here. And, uh, and then we want to peak L1 and L3, which are these two coils here, for a maximum S meter reading. Okay, the uh, 10 meter coils required a bit of adjusting to peak them up. And uh, the result was successful. Now I have actually can get a peak on the uh, third 10 meter subband. So it uh, looks like we corrected the alignment problem with the preselector on that. Now for the passband tuner, we get a, a bit more of a stern warning here that uh, it's adjusted at the factory and there shouldn't be any attempted to attempt made to adjust the slugs uh, because the equipment that is used to adjust them is not commercially available. Okay, let's see what the next page says. Okay, so uh, before checking the passband tuner adjustments we want to be sure that we've done the 50kc and 405kc uh, LOs and got them exactly on frequency and we did that okay before. So the way to adjust this, and really just adjusting essentially the position of the knob, you know, we're going to remove it off the shaft and adjust it if necessary, is to set the product detector uh, on and turn on the 2.1 kilohertz bandwidth and turn the passband tuning knob in each direction from center while listening to the noise. The highest pitch of the noise reached in each direction should be the same. 
and if not then we want to pull the set screw off the back of the tuner uh, uh, the pass band tuner and adjust the knob so that we can kind of equalize the pitch of the noise as we swing that from one side to the other okay doesn't really matter what band we're on I've got it set to 40 meters with the pre-selector uh, optimized we'll just listen to the noise here product detector is on with the BFO and let's listen to the extremes of how high pitch the noise goes at the other end All right, to me they sound pretty darn close certainly close enough that I don't worry about uh, making any changes to that, uh, that position or that adjustment right, that kind of brings us to the end of the uh, alignment of the uh, 2B I think it was all quite successful uh, a couple of minor tweaks, especially to the oscillators, which were a bit off at the very beginning, and to the pre-selector at 10 meters. That was Those are the three things that were off the most. But uh, for the most part, I'm really happy with the way this came out. So uh, we're going to put this to use out here on the bench. Well, I hope you enjoyed the series here on the, uh, the 2B. And uh, thanks again for watching.